So a society in transformation learning from history, evolution, because uh, we are evolving, right? We were like that and now we are proud. We have all the technological marvels, we have mobile phones and everything. So more or less it's like Star Trek, no? Star Trek, you remember? Uh, mobile phones, we had mobile phones, computer who could speak to us, you know, so Captain Kirk. <laughs> Yes, teleportation. Well, this is still missing, but I think for tourism it would be great. But we have something similar, Zoom teleconferences and so on. So, yeah, it's great. We live in a beautiful world. So, something that I would really like to have uh, is this thing here, a time machine. Okay, so a time machine, and I would just go somewhere back in history uh, to pick up somebody and bring them here and show them. Everything we have, how lucky we are, how lucky we, we are. No? So think like, like if somebody from year 4000 uses this machine, comes here and tells us, would you like to have a glimpse to what is happening in year 4000? Right, we would say, great. So we can do the same, okay, if we have a machine like this. And for instance, we go 2000 years back in time, the times of the glorious Roman Empire, we pick a family, and we tell them, look, we are bringing you here in 2023. Just have a look. So they come here, they land, and that's what they see. <laughs> and I look at this, and probably they don't understand. It's 2,000 years in the future, and technological marvels, and they have something like this. And they have more and more and more. This is not only Italy, of course. No, it's most of the, it's also Italy. And so you can see that maybe our Star Trek imagination didn't go so well. No, we are after thinking, what, what the hell happened to humanity? No? And even worse, we had this. <laughs> so how do you explain to the poor Roman families that we build roads and then we put holes in the streets, we put the... It's just that the holes are not going down, but they're coming up. It's, it's crazy, you know, because technologically it doesn't make any sense, because obviously, you know, we, we can do clear streets like the Roman used to do, you know, clear, beautiful streets, but we do this. And this is a symptom, but something has, something has happened, something very important, that we're... There is not only technology. If you just look at technology alone, it doesn't work. It's a, it's a tango. Technology and society. You cannot understand society just looking at technology and vice versa. Okay. Technologically, this is crazy. Factory in society, and it makes perfect sense. As crazy as it is for, for the family of, of Romans, because you need the two sides of the coin. That's the most important lesson that you have to learn, okay? So apparently, William Schaffner is saying, oh, what, what's happening? But we know what happened, okay? It's not such a crazy world, maybe, okay? It's like uh, social, social media. From 2019, we are officially in the social media era, okay? Because TikTok surpassed Facebook. TikTok, and it's great to look at what the big uh, knowledgeable people said about TikTok. It's crazy. It's just for bimbos. Nobody will use it. Who, who would just upload a video of 10, 15 seconds and just waste time? Well, number one application in the world. So it would be too easy to say, oh yeah, but, but that's why people look at TikTok. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's the app that people use the most. Well, many people, but yes, but it's not so simple. It's not just because there are girls like this. There's so much more. And it's different. There's a different kind of technology that TikTok uh, implemented, which you can understand only if you look at society, because technically this is just, just a very simple thing. You, you upload videos, okay? So it's not such a novelty, okay? And if you look back in history, similar things happen. The next, we are about 35 years ago, and there is this beautiful computer, the most powerful computer in the world. Here you can see the advertisement of the time, okay? And what happened to this, the most powerful computer in the world? You see people advertising it. Do you recognize the guy who is making this advertisement? Probably not. But if we go a bit 
forward in time, that's the guy. Okay, it's Steve Jobs, who are trying to sell this, which was, technologically speaking, the most advanced computer in the world, but it miserably failed because it didn't take into account the other part of the tunnel, the society. But then he learned the lessons with Apple, okay? But it's not just about technology, but it's also about society. And we could go on and on and on. Look, in the 60s, these, these are the 60s. It's the times of Elvis, the pelvis, Che Guevara, the, the kind of technological level you can see, it, okay? And in the 60s, people invent also the mouse. And it's great, we all love it and use the mouse. But maybe you don't know that the same guy who invented the mouse invented also this other thing here. You see, right? The mouse left this strange thing here, which technologically speaking was great. But socially speaking, this device here was terrible. And now it's forgotten in history. Although it's a great example of a beautiful technology that doesn't work with society. Okay. If you want a closer example, look at the remote, the remote of your television. It's a great, powerful source of information okay, of how things can go well or bad. Do a conscious analysis, meditate. How many keys do you really use in your remote? Really, don't, don't lie. Okay. So probably a numeric keys and two or three others. There are other keys that are there but probably never used. I'm sure you, you don't really know what your remote can offer you. So what? Are, are these guys crazy? Building up remotes, but you know, 50% well, uh, of the keys are not used. Because there is more than technology. Technologically, these are perfect objects, but they don't work so well, okay? There's been other attempts, interesting. The Samsung One Remote. I have, I have designed a world, and so, so you, you might say, well, okay, these are too complex, so this should be great. <laughs> it, it just doesn't have keys, almost, okay. This is another spectacular example of total failure. People hate it. If you have a Samsung television, you have probably been burnt by this uh, remote command here. Try to go to channel 26 with a remote that doesn't have numerical keys. Okay. If you have tried, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so again, people are crazy here. No, they're design technology without really looking at the other part of the tunnel. Okay. So localizing it to tourism, sustainability, okay, we could talk for hours and hours, but there is lunch time, don't worry. Booking.com. When booking introduced sustainability into its uh, online environment, see what, what they wrote. According to our research, 78% uh, of travelers say they intend to stay in a more sustainable property. That's great. Yeah, 29% don't know how to find sustainable travel options. Well, okay, so we need to do it better. That's great. Uh, it's very nice. So it's correct, obviously, because they did this kind of research. And it's also completely wrong. This is also completely wrong. Why this is wrong? But 78% of travelers say they intend to stay in a more sustainable property. Because it's well known what, what happens in this situation. Walmart in the US, a very famous uh, uh, shop, uh, shop line. Okay, so Walmart did a, did a famous now marketing analysis. Okay, and they were asking clients uh, in order to improve. So would you like Walmart to be less cluttered? Do we have too many products? And people say, well, yes. Less clutter, less confusion is always better, right? And so Walmart said, well, great. So let's reduce the amount of merchandise that we use, 15% less. They lost almost $2 billion. Because you see where, where the point is. Well, sure, if you ask people, do you like confusion or you don't like confusion? Whoever, I like confusion, no. It's clear that people answer, no, we, we don't like confusion. But it doesn't mean that you are right in proceeding in this path here. And it's the same here. 78% of travelers say they intend to stay in a more sustainable property. Great. But that's the final part of the question. The first part of the question is, but do you know what a sustainable property is? You actually look for it. If I tell you, do you like sustainable properties? Obviously, people like with the clutter, say, yeah, it's great, green is great. <laughs> Who's going to say, no, I don't like green. 
I like waste. I want to destroy the world. No, obviously. Obviously. No, maybe if you drink too much, but in a normal state of mind, obviously, you say, yes, it's great. Sustainable is great. But then you have to look at the previous part. So people really know what's going on or not. So since I had some time before I've been invited, I, I try to actually measure what Booking.com is doing. But they, they, they did a laudable effort, you know, they three levels of uh, sustainability and so on. But then there's the people. Remember, this is technology. But the other part of the tango, you have the people. And it's two who tango together, OK? So this is, this is an example of hotels in Parma. And you can see, so travel sustainable level one, travel sustainable level three. Great, OK? That's the desktop version, if you have a laptop. And it's pretty visible, right? It's pretty visible, as you can see. That's the mobile version. You, you can try it if you have the app, okay? Well, you see what's happening here. The same hotels, travel sustainable. It's not uh, green anymore. It's mixed in between, okay? So this is just the intuition, because you can measure precisely what's going to happen here. We know what is going to happen. We have, we have precise measures. We do hundreds of analysis of this kind every year, okay? So we knew already what was going to happen, but you can see it intuitively. But people don't even see this, thing, this, this part here, travel sustainable. And if you pick normal people, normal people who just don't know anything, they, they want to book a room, we try. With a sample of over 250 people, we said, just, just book a room. Please stop before you book it, because we don't have money, but uh, okay, just try. Okay. And you know what? Out of 100 people, you know the percentage of people who, after the booking, realized that they had done a proper choice following the sustainable way, in the desktop case, which is a bit more visible here, 2%. So 2% said, yes, I, I looked at the, the leaves here, and I chose also because of this. Mobile, 0%. 0%. Because that's the normal people that goes to these websites without knowing what these things are. Because there's no, there's no explanation here. If you go and try to click, whatever, there's no explanation. We asked, actually, so what, what do you think these, these things are? And 100% of the people interpreted this like travel sustainable means to travel there probably i save some fuel to travel there because first people travel sustainable so nobody understood that actually the hotel is trying inside the hotel to do something because there's travel sustainable and it's the normal people we're talking about the tango okay this is the technological level, we have our perception, like people who build remotes. They're not crazy. They have their own perception of technology, which might be different from what people actually want. Okay, It's the same because there is a problem of inertia. We're stuck because we, we don't really like change. So change has to be pushed. The, uh, the keyboard of our beloved mobile phones, everybody, Use a mobile, probably, no. and everybody interacts with keyboards like this. Do you know that this keyboard is totally inefficient? <coughs> so it's slow. It's a slow keyboard. It doesn't make any sense. But why do we go on using this keyboard? It's Q W E R T Y. It's the same keyboard we use on a physical device. So we're just copying it, but it doesn't work well on a mobile. It's completely inefficient. Even the alphabetical keyboard, A, B, C, D, E, works better than this keyboard here, faster. Still, we are stuck in this situation. Because we don't like to change, because change implies an effort. And we don't like effort, of course. So it's full of examples where you know we are stuck because we cannot go on. And, and people need to be pushed. People need to be pushed. Okay. So just very quickly, when I, I'm running out of time, okay. Artificial intelligence is also a big word. You, you, you are probably bombarded by these things of artificial intelligence. Should I, should I go? Should I stay? Whatever. Okay. Well, it's not so easy, okay. For instance, uh, artificial intelligence powered cars, great for sustainability, okay. United Nations, so let's, let's put citizens 30 kilometers per hour. And that's the perfect opportunity to use uh, 
autonomous cars, less fuel consumption, less uh, pollution, and so on. Great, okay, so we tried to measure the impact of an autonomous car. I'm, I'm trying to go quickly, very quickly, sorry. And this is the summary. This is the summary. People were horning at us. People were shouting at us because we, we were going 30 kilometers per hour with a sign 30 kilometers, okay. One guy stopped us in front of the car, went down, and was trying to beat me up personally, okay. I had to say, please, it, it's a research effort. <laughs> Look for me, Massimo Bracchiori on Google. Eventually, it ended up in a selfie, but I was risking to be beaten up severely. Okay, so you also heard of like, uh, things like ChatGPT Chet and so on. It is great, it's great technology, but be careful because we're not there yet. Because the real problem is not about the technology, it's about the society who puts the data inside the technology. Do this simple example. This is part of a massive study that we have been doing. But just, just to show you, it's, it's easy. You, you can try it at home. OK, Asian girls, this is what you get from Google. And the artificial intelligence system by Google is trying to classify the concept of an Asian girl. So do you think this is an impartial view? OK, we, we measure this. So in a normal Google navigation, you don't realize it looks normal to you. The moment you take the navigation away and you show it to the people out of context, people say, well, this is crazy. It's crazy, but you don't notice when you navigate. Because it is crazy, it's perfectly stereotyped. As you see, you know, European girls. Yes, all European girls are, are like this. Right, French girls, yes, you can try with Spanish girls. Italian girls, but you say, well, but probably yes. Yes, the artificial intelligence by Google did it right. At least a normal woman is there. Right, at least. Yes, normal woman. Why Italian women are hotter than French girls? <laughs> because Italian women, I invite you to read the article, okay? And, and it's all knowledge that is going into the artificial intelligence system of Google, okay? So the, the author here said because Italian women use a lot of olive oil. They use it everywhere, even on the skin, okay? And she also says the chem is magical. Okay, so piece of, you know, crap. But the artificial intelligence system of, of, of Google is eating up and offering to us, okay? Chat GPT, it is great. Is it disruptive? Yes, it is disruptive, okay? Ask uh, Chat GPT to do slogans, for instance. Slogans about Palma de Mallorca. Discover the essence of the Mediterranean in Palma de Mallorca. That's great. Chat GPT did it. Okay, well, but sustainable slogan experience the natural beauty of the Mediterranean while preserving it in Palma de Mallorca. A bit more clunky, but it's, it's, it's something. It's an artificial entity that is suggesting a slogan. Okay. Well, and then we ask, okay, what the, the United Nations could do as a general slogan for sustainability? And boom, travel with a purpose, leave a positive impact on the world. But the artificial intelligence that built this wonderful slogan. And we might be impressed, right? We might even start to use it again. Okay, let's use it again. United Nations, it's great. And plus the artificial intelligence, so it's also cool, because everything with artificial intelligence is cool, as you know, right? Yes, a little problem. Somebody else wrote it. This guy here, Elegant Africa Travels, did this slogan here, and the artificial intelligence just was picking it up. And so you see that we, we do have a problem, because everything depends on the kind of data that we put in, okay? And it's all part of how artificial intelligence works. I'm ending quick, very quickly, sorry about that. I know there is lunch time. Okay, it, 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 it's all part of how artificial intelligence works nowadays, okay? So it's very good at identifying objects. You can put a Dalmatian uh, dog with cherries and artificial intelligence understands what's going on, okay? You can put artificial intelligence in the Lord of the Rings movie. Have you ever wondered why the epic battles there are so realistic because every single component here, every single orc here in the body has a small artificial intelligence brain. So they kind of think, that's why it's so realistic. But it's also kind of fluctuating. Does something bad happen if one of the orcs step in the wrong direction? No, okay, probably not in the movie. Because that's how artificial intelligence now, in these days, works, okay? It's like in this scenario, we, we are great imaginative human beings. We look at the sky, we see clouds, and we imagine, you know, oh, there, there, there's a dog, there's a cat. We start to, you know, 
fantasizing. And, and one of the big breakthroughs of artificial intelligence was that they started to also make the computers fantasize, to kind of dream, to see in a cloud things. Okay, this is the first example of dreams by an artificial intelligence. So the artificial intelligence takes everything and starts to dream, assemble things and so on. And it's like our dreams, you know. Sometimes our dreams are perfectly realistic. Sometimes they're not. Okay, and this is the current status of the situation with artificial intelligence. It's a big dream. It might be a realistic dream, but in other instances, the answer that you get is wrong. Completely wrong, like in a dream, okay? And so the, the moral of all this, I will, I will skip this example, I don't have time, okay? Is that, yes, you, you can use artificial intelligence and today, okay? You, you, you can create art. This is Palma de Mallorca, artified by Dali, okay? An online system, that's great. You can use it. You can ask, uh, you know, uh, United Nations sustainability, tourism, and that's what you get, but you see, what we see here. It's a dream for a world that doesn't make any sense because it's a kind of dream. We are there in the dream phase, okay? So it's up to us to then evolve, to make the dream thing go on. But you don't have to be scared. It means that it's a dream and sometimes dreams can be beautiful. You can take this thing, forget about the dreamlike attempt and take the part that you need, okay? So integrate because it's a tango. Integrate the technology with the people. Supervise the artificial intelligence, okay? And that's the key to actually have productive and efficient technology. Thank you, and sorry if I took a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Professor, and as I said, you have the honor to have with us Michael Collins. Please, a uh, warm applause for him. He's the founder manager director of Control Media. IE. He's going to. I, I was going to say you were going to interview, but I think we have time for one or two questions, Michael. You know, so thank you so much. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. We're, we're very short on time, so we're going to keep this brief. And we've lunch. And we've lunch, yes, as Massimo keeps reminding me, and therefore I get hungry. Um, but I think it would be unfair to let Massimo leave the stage without a few short questions. That said, Massimo is around during lunch, and he's around tomorrow as well, so please do take the time to say hello. What I love there, Massimo, as in that you're a professor of computer science, you invented hypersearch, you're obviously a very intelligent man, but yet you brought technology to us in a fun and exciting way. You made it accessible. But that said, and, and, and you brought in the human element. You just, you just didn't talk about technology. You said, well, humans influence it. So you can have perfect technology, but if it doesn't work for the individual, for humanity, it fails. Considering where we are right now, we're in the middle of a climate crisis, are you hopeful? Are you positive that we as humans, because we have the technology already, you know, sustainable fuels are there already, electric cars are there already. Are you confident that we can solve the problems that lay ahead of us? Well, it's a very good question. I, I am confident that there's only one little problem, but uh, it's, it's part of how we work. We tend to work, and it, it can be measured. I'm, I'm just simplifying, but it can be measured precisely. We tend to reason, and it's also intuitively easy to understand. No? We as humans tend to reason in the short term versus the long term. Okay? So sustainability is a long term concept. We tend to reason in the short term because sh sh short term reasoning was what saved us. Okay? I, I am a, a, an ancestor. I lived uh, 10,000 years ago. My short term goal is to survive the day. So that's my short-term goal. And it worked. In modern society, it doesn't work so well. If you want a very simple example again, take the mobile, the, the remote command of your television. Do you know what people do when they have to go from channel 5 to channel 12, for instance? So intuitively, they should go to channel 12, pressing 1, 2. Most of people don't. They go from channel 5 to 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. Up to 7 clicks, uh, people prefer to go plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, plus 1, rather than using the numeric keyboard. So we do things because, slow way. because it's a short-term optimization. We are optimizing the short-term and say, well, what's the shortest-term, uh, most easy action that I can do? Plus 1, 
But we don't see the long term, which is, but you have to go to channel 12 from channel 5, okay? So that's the perfect example of how we work. So we, we will get there, okay? But it just takes when, when will more we get time. We, we will get there when, you know, we will have water, like, up here. <laughs> At that point, we will be forced to do it, unless we act preemptively, okay? But we need a lot of awareness to the people. You, you, have, you have to be very clear to the people to make them show the long term, okay? Because people don't see the long term by, by themselves, because it, it's nobody's fault. We are built like this, okay? That's why we have to change to push people. Hopefully so. <laughs> um, what are you working on right now? Are you working on any projects? I mean, we, we know about hypersearch. What are you doing right now that impacts sustainability or tourism? Can you give us an example? Well, okay, that's it. Too, too, too many things, but also also working on uh, intelligence systems, how to you know understand how people behave. Also sensors, we are placing sensors everywhere, trying to understand how people walk, and how people you know move, uh, how bikes, uh, pedestrians, cars also walk, uh, garbage collecting. Okay, you you can save uh, a lot of money. Okay, and, and that's also something that you can use. To, to the people, to convince people, because you know, money runs, runs the world, okay? Well, it's, it, money is a short-term concept, because people say, well, okay, today I have less or I have more, okay? So that's, that's something that you can really, uh, the, the, the important thing is to never forget that it's a tango, okay? Technology alone is nothing, you need to understand. It's, a, it's two, side, two sides of the same coin. It's the people and the, the technology, and there's no, one side of the coin only. It's a one single coin and you have to understand both to actually make progress in our society. So give me an example. We were discussing earlier sensors and how you're using them in waste disposal. Explain how placing say, sensors in waste disposal bins. Waste, waste disposal, saves. for instance, there are the, the garbage collectors that goes and follow the same path usually and maybe the bin is empty. Okay, yes, but if, if you know that the bin is empty, you can optimize your flow, okay? So yes, the technology is there, you can put sensors, but there's a problem, technology costs. And especially for public institutions, maybe for a private. If you say to a private entity, oh, you're going to save a lot of money, uh, we did. Private, the private world is more receptive, the public company as well. Uh, well look, if you give me 100,000 euros, we, we can save in five years, well, 100,000 euros are not now, today, me, the administration, maybe the next one. It's, it's clear that the public administration is not so receptive unless we lower the cost. Okay. We have special technology which is very cheap, budget line. Okay. One of these special sensors costs less than 10 euros. We can place it everywhere. And now we don't ask for 100,000, we ask for 10,000. And 10,000 is something reasonable, but even a public institution can do. So that's one of the key to actually break through public institutions. Don't go for the moon. Don't go and say, oh, we have this great technology, but you need to give us a couple of millions. No, it doesn't work. Fly low. Okay, no? Don't go to the sun. Fly low and say, okay, if you just give me this, we can try something and you can see. Maybe I can convince you, but this kind of technology can be disruptive if later on you also put more money into it. But you have to understand that first inertia, okay? It's like the keyboard, the keyboard of our mobile phone. People are slow in change, so you need to gradually convince also the public institution. Okay, don't go straight up to the moon. Start here on the ground.